Boom 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 boom. This video is called "Forget All About Theory and Just Try," and the best way to try with color is to do color studies. I will always set up a color palette before starting an illustration and I will always set up a color palette for each individual color study. There is no rule on how many colors should be in a color palette and this is really up to you. Designers often use five colors and I find this is a pretty good number to start with but you can use less or more or add them on the fly if you just pay some attention to maintaining color harmony. A color study is only an initial jab at color and you will need to refine the colors in the final illustrations anyhow. When setting up a color palette by hand, I think unity and variety. A good palette has a variety of values and a variety of saturation levels and a good contrast in color temperature, which is probably the most important of all. I like saturated colors personally, so my palette my palettes tend to be very colorful. At the start, you can pick nearly any color you want. Here I'm just picking some random colors that appeal to me. The easiest way to harmonize random colors is to mix in the same color in all of them. And a little amount goes a long way. Digitally, this is very easy. You can add a layer on top at low transparency and just um, paint on it with what, whatever color uh, into all the, one, all the colors you have selected for your palette. You can experiment with different unifying colors, you can experiment with different layer modes, different transparency level uh, for your unifying layer. The only thing that matters is that the same effect is applied to all colors in your palette. Here I've done a bunch of variations of the same palette with a yellow layer and a couple more with a blue layer on top with different blending modes. I'm going to apply this palette to a simple illustration as a color study. It's a quick test to see how this works on the full illustration and where I can place the various colors. Uh, I'm using this little sketch of a space girl as an example and I'm doing the first in real time and the others are going to be sped up. I'm doing the first in real time so you can see how much time it takes to do a color study. Color studies are very rough and even on complex illustrations they shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes to do. Some considerations on skin color. It doesn't really matter. Don't get hung up on skin color. Not in illustrations, uh, well not outside of illustration hopefully. Um, skin is a very complex surface. It can contain many different colors and it can be nearly any color depending on the light. Uh, what I do in color studies is to pick the color in the palette that is closest to orange or red orange and use that. Or I adjust it by making it lighter for light skin or darker for dark skin or slightly warmer or slightly less saturated. It's, it's a first start and it keeps the color harmony. Uh, sometimes I find I need to change it later on when I work on the final illustration and sometimes actually pretty often it, it just works like that. Um, I also don't get married with the color palette. If I find I need a lighter color like in this case or a darker color I will pick one of the hues and make it lighter. I try not to change the hues after I've worked so hard at making them fit together. Uh, but if you keep the hue, it's normally no problem to change the saturation or the value. Um, another thing I try to do is to establish some kind of, of rhythm, of color rhythm. So to have different parts of the illustration talk to each other um, by repeating or alternating certain colors. Uh, sometimes it's just very small details, uh, but I have the feeling it, it really make, make um, things hang together better. I have seen artists who put all colors everywhere by mixing very small strokes of the other colors within the base color of every part of the illustration uh, and I have done that um, sometimes. It's, it's definitely another option that get everything to harmonize nicely. <laughs> Boom, boom, boom.
If you do rendering, you will need to introduce a first approximation of light and shadow colors. As I mentioned in the first video, changing just the value uh, of the color you chose is not always a good idea. And a better first attempt at light and shadow color is to use modifying layers. Um, multiply layers for the shadow work exceptionally well. Um, and you can use the same color across all of the base colors of your palette. And for the light, you can use a dodge, color dodge layer, or an overlay layer, or a screen layer. There is different merits and drawbacks to each of them. Um, and you can use whichever color you want and apply it to all colors in your palette. Because, because you're applying the same adjustment to the whole palette, you get this initial stab at light and shadow colors without breaking the color harmony. So basically, once you have established the initial variety of color, you are unifying everything else. You are unifying a little bit the hue, and you're unifying the shadows, and you're unifying the lights. The same palette can yield different color studies, depending how you apply the colors, uh, what role you assign to each color, if you, for example, use a different color for the background and for the highlights, you can have a completely different uh, feel uh, to the illustration. So here, for example, there is a second study with a little variation of the same palette and the effect is completely different. Another way to set up a harmonious color palette is to pick two or three different colors and then create mixtures um, using brushes at low transparency or using the blender brush or using the smudge tool. And then you pick the colors from the mixtures. This is a little bit closer to what you would do with uh, analog art materials and so it can, it can be uh, very satisfactory. And here is a color study with this palette. Another way to set up a good color palette is to start from a photo. It doesn't matter what colors you pick from a photo, they will always be working well together because all items in a, in a photo are illuminated by the same light. So each color in the image is affected by the color of the, of the light and this acts as a unifying agent. You can drop your photo in Photoshop and pick the colors manually, as many as you think appropriate, though maybe not too many. When picking a limited number of colors from a photo, I always pay attention to pick warm and cool colors, light and dark, and saturated and unsaturated, as I mentioned before. The added bonus of using a photo is that it also can yield your shadow colors and your light colors. So, and everything will be holding together. You might, you know, as it's been said a million times, a camera has a much reduced color sensitivity compared to your eyes. And this is absolutely true. So don't trust photos as sources of accurate color information. We are just using them here as a, a source for creating a color palette. And for this, it's perfectly adequate and it's a great shortcut. You can use palette catalogs, samplers for interior design, a graphic or an illustration as an inspiration for a color palette. Uh, here, for example, I used a graphic generated by a random pattern generator, which is called Deco. I wanted to try something a bit more spacey, so I went hunting for some night sky photos on Pexels. Uh, and this time, for example, I applied the Photoshop Posterize filter to simplify the colors in the image before picking them. If you are an Adobe Cloud user, like me, you can use Adobe Color on desktop or Adobe Capture on mobile uh, to select and fine tune your palettes and save it in the cloud so that they are available into your applications. 
Adobe Color is a very cool web and mobile application. You can use it to create palettes from scratch or you can create several different palettes from a photo. You can pick the colors manually in the photo or you can use one of the predefined options. In this photo I used here, I liked the muted option but I wanted a darker color here as well and an extra color beside yellow and blue-gray so I, I spent some time picking an additional color that the palette didn't yield. After you save it into your library it is directly available into any Adobe software so in terms of process it, it makes it even simpler and most, more efficient. Or you can use any other of the thousands of color palette generators apps that are available on desktop or mobile. A color study is, is just an initial guide, and, but color scheme is one of the big decisions and you need to invest the time um, and if you do this it makes working on final illustration so much easier. It, to me it's completely worth the effort. It took me just a little more than one hour to do all this color palette hunting, creating and study exercise and, and now I have a bunch of options to choose from. Which palette works best? Well, this is totally subjective and as in the case of creating or selecting color palettes, it's actually it's part of your own voice, of your own artistic voice. I like this one and this is the one I chose for the final illustration. And because these days I create characters in sets of trees, I went ahead and used the same palette with a little bit of extensions for the other two. You can do this throughout the whole set of illustrations if you want. You will end up having illustrations that fit together uh, and yet they are all distinct from each other and just using one single color palette in different ways. So this is all I wanted to say uh, or all I can say in a limited time frame. I hope it was somewhat useful or make choosing and managing color a little bit less daunting and happy creating.